According to the will of God, where light shines upon your life, and your life will never remain the same again. Praise God. Good God, awesome God, I just worship you, I give you praise. Good morning, wherever you are, good afternoon, and good evening as you're watching this program. My name is Blessing Osamoyi. This is the Fellowship with the Holy Spirit, where God's Spirit and His Word is being revealed to us. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is a fellowship where the Holy Spirit will give us an insight of the kingdom and revealing the mystery of the kingdom to us. And I believe you're going to be blessed today in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity to come before you this wonderful, glorious moment. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing for us as a father, as a good shepherd, as a creator of the heavens and the earth. Father, we worship you, we reverend you. Father, we ask that you begin to take control over this wonderful fellowship that you've made wonderful. Father God, we ask that you begin to minister to us. And as we begin to hear your word, Lord, make us a good ground for you, that our heart and our lifestyle will be touched by your wonderful light. And when that light shines, darkness will not be able to comprehend anymore in our lives in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray this moment that let mercy be good to speak for us. Let mercy be good to speak for us in everything we've done, maybe throughout the day or that we've done. Father, God, we ask for your forgiveness in Jesus' name. We ask that Lord King of glory that let the blood be good to speak for us louder than, than every other blood, than every other covenant that is not of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the blood be good to destroy what needs to be destroyed. Every foundation that is not of you be destroyed in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let us put to Psalm, Psalm 66. Let's open to the book of Psalm 66. The book of Psalm 66. Go and grab your Bible. Please get a, your Bible with you. If you don't have a, uh, a, a, an art copy of, of, uh, of the Bible, you can get a um, uh, 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 download uh, 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 a Bible on your phone, and by that you will be able to have an access to read with us, to join us. It's all about fellowshipping together as a family. I want to read from verse 1. He said, Shout joyfully to God. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Verse 2 says, sing of the honor and the glory and the magnificency of his name. Make his praise glorious. Praise the Lord. I just want you to watch this um, short video that we did together. I did it with a, with a, with a friend and a brother and, and a son to be able to worship God. And God wanted you to join us to worship this moment. So get ready to join with the worship. And God bless you as you begin to worship God in Jesus' name. Amen. God, we are here to worship God. And I'm here with a friend, a son, and a man of God as well. Just wanted to join us to worship God together. And um, just worship God in your own spirit, in your own heart. Just be good to tell God how you love him. Tell him how good he is. Tell him how awesome he is. How glorious he is. He's a good God. There is none like him. You know, he has a wonderful, glorious name. His name is Jehovah. 
His name is Yeshu Amashia. His name is Jehovah Shalom, God of hosts. His name is Jehovah Elohim, Elion. So we just want to worship God. And um, if you're there, worship God. What, how you feel like worshiping Him in your own language, whether it's English, whatever it is, you want to worship God in language with His. What matters is God knows your heart and He understands your language. And I just want to sing a song and my song will proceed from there as He begins to worship as well. Oh, we worship you, God. Give you praise, God. Your name is exalted in the heaven. Jehovah. Exalted in the heaven. Hallelujah. Jehovah Emmanuel. In your name, Hosanna. Is exalted in the heavens. Exalted in the earth. We bow before you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I see one more time singing in your name is exalted in the air exalted in the air Alleluia Sing with me now your name, your name, your name in your name Exalted in the heaven, exalted in the heaven, Alleluia.
begin to exalt him. God has been able and is always able to do all things. He's a good God, a great God. He's worthy of our praise. There is none like him. We lift his name on I. I want to sing a song. Yeshua Ah my beloved the most beautiful among thousand, among thousand, and my beloved Jesus, the most beautiful. Among thousand, among thousand, we sing Yeshua. He's a mighty God, my beloved Yeshua Mashiach, my beloved Jesus Christ. is so awesome, he's so faithful, I sing, Yeshua. Say now, yes, you can sing one song, then we hear it. We'll continue, yes, 
We give you praise. Daddy, you are highly exalted. God is just wonderful. Just begin to worship him. Just begin to worship him. Just begin to give him thanks. Begin to thank God for what he has done for you. Begin to thank God for the price he has paid. Begin to thank God for the healing power upon your life. Begin to thank God for sustainers upon your life. Give him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. It is not coincident that you're logging in right now. It's not coincident that you're watching me right now. Begin to give him praise. Is he going to do a wonderful thing in your life? Is going to do a great thing and excellent, magnificent thing in your life this season in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of the cross will deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. So we give, we give, we give him praise. He's worthy to be praised. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Praise the Lord. Thank you once again. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, every man of God that has been a blessing to us, to this ministry. We thank you so much for your prayers. We thank you so much for, for your advice. We thank you so much for, for all the positive things, prophecies you've been laying upon this ministry. We ask that the Lord will continue to reward you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to quickly make us understand today we're going to be discussing or not discussing, you're going to, God is going to be speaking through me ministering to you and I by the title which says the time like this the time like this the topic is saying the time like this the time like this time of celebration like this the time like this where everything is happening around the world the time like this where the world is going through a time of hardship you know the time like this where you're hearing bad news and good news a time like this where you begin to see things all around you some will be speaking negative some will be speaking positive some will be a source of strength some will be a sort of a source of weakness now it depends on we one you want to take the time like this that is the topic and we're going to be reading from genesis chapter 12 verse 10 we're going to be reading from genesis chapter 12 verse 10 that's what we're going to be reading from now let me just open to genesis chapter 12 verse 10 if you are there say praise the lord genesis chapter 12 verse 10 that is you can find that in the old testament that is the first book in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 10. And I want to read. It says, Now there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to live temporarily, for the famine in the land was oppressive and severe. It says, Abraham went down to Egypt to live temporarily, for the famine in the land was oppressive and severe and before we begin to deep deep on this scripture and read other references and and before we begin to go more as God begin to open our eyes to the in-depth of the revelation that he want us to see I want us to open to second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 16 to 17 I want us to make a declaration second Timothy chapter 3 I love Reading this word as declaration before I start ministration, as God begin to lead me, as the Holy Spirit begin to lead me. From verse 16, I want to read. He said, all scriptures is God breaked, given by divine, I'm reading the Amplified Version of the scriptures. He said, all scriptures is God breaked, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction. Now, I want you to declare, say, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I begin to receive the word of God today, I will be inspired in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I begin to declare, as I begin to receive the word of God today, it shall be profitable 
profitable for me to grow. It shall be pro pro uh, profitable for me to be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. We are seeing the moment of declaration. Now, he now said here, he said, it's profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error. Now, I begin to declare, as I begin to re receive and I begin to hear this word today, the Holy Spirit, by God, mercy and power, will begin to break away whatever that is in me, that is iniquity in my life. It will begin to be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. And as I begin to read the scripture today, and as I begin to study the word of God today, as I begin to see everything that needs to be corrected in my life, everything that needs to be corrected in my way of thinking, in the name of Jesus Christ. We are seeing the moment of, in a, in a time of declaration. Now, he said, he said, restoration to obedience. Say, as I begin to receive the word of God today, I begin to walk by grace, the obedience in the word of God. I begin to walk in the obedience of God. I begin to walk in the obedience of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. He now said, in, com he said, he now said obedience for training in righteousness and learning to live a conformity to God's will. Now I begin to declare, as I begin to receive the word of God to this moment, I begin to walk in the righteousness of God and I begin to walk in the righteousness of God. My life will become alive in Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll begin to walk according to God's will in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are seeing the moment of divine declaration. Now, still begin to declare. Say, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral. Begin to declare. Say, as I begin to receive the word of God today, I begin to walk in that kingdom integrity and the morals of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Men will begin to see, my family will begin to see the goodness of God in my life. My family will begin to see the love of God in my life. My family, my family will become blessed by the way and the character and what I do. They will be blessed by it in the name of Jesus Christ. My community will be blessed by it in the name of Jesus Christ. And the church in general, everyone connected to me will be blessed by it in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone that shall meet, as I begin to receive the word of God, I'll begin to summon courage to preach the word of God. And I myself will be to enjoy the courage in the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 says that, so that the man of God say, I am a man of God by grace because Christ has drawn me to, by the blood of Jesus, Christ has made me to become the son of God. Christ has made me to become the daughter of Zion. The Christ has made me to become a servant and a disciple of God. So I am a man of God. Be going to declare that to yourself. Be going to declare that to your family. Be going to declare that to your to anyone connected to you. Be going to declare that. Say that as, as, as I receive the word of God today, they will begin to see the man of God in me. They will begin to declare, truly now we know you are a man of God. This shall be what they will begin to declare in, declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said the man of God, the man of God may be complete and proficient, and may be complete and proficient in art fitted, fitted and totally equipped for a very good work. Now I begin to declare, I am a man of God by grace. As I begin to receive the word of God, I will be I will be, I will be equipped. I will be equipped. My family will be equipped. The church in general will be equipped in the name of Jesus Christ. As I begin to receive the word of God, I will be afflicted, totally equipped with a very good work of God. That means as I begin to hear the word of God, I will be fruitful. I am a good ground. As I receive the word of God, nothing will stop me from, from meditating on the word of God. Now as I begin to declare, say, as I receive the word of God, nothing will stop me from, from, from using that with God as a tool to overcome and to conquer every plans of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' most wonderful name we have declared. Brother and sister, I want you to see it this way. As you have declared, declared those words, begin to believe those words you've declared. Because those words you've declared, they have become spirit and life in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' most wonderful name we have declared. Now we're going back to now to Genesis chapter 12 from verse 10. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We'll bless your holy name. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Genesis chapter, chapter 12, verse 10. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. And I say, now there was... A farming in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to 
to Egypt to live. There was a famine in the land. You can call that famine, there was scarcity in the land. Just as we are seeing around the world right now, the world is going through our time financially. Everyone is complaining. Right here in the United Kingdom, I, I, I don't know about you, the bill is rising. You know, the bill is rising. You're hearing all sorts of news. You're hearing all sorts of things that are not encouraging. Some are encouraging, some are not encouraging. It's a time like this. And if you look at it, in the time of Abraham, there was famine. Now, there there is famine. Famine means there's scarcity. They are not getting what they're supposed to get rightfully in the, in the capacity they want. But Abraham has to leave. But before we go to that verse 10, you must read verse 1 first. Let's read verse 1 first. When God gave him an instruction, an instruction. Look at the instruction God gave him. Let me read. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. He said, now in Aaron, the Lord had said to Abraham to leave. He said, he said now in Aaron, the Lord had I said to Abraham, go away from your country and from your relative and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. This instruction was given to him. Why was that instruction given to him? Because God knew definitely that there is, there is paganism in the life of his family that is coming from. Because God knew that there has to be a separation. God wants to bring out a new, a new nation out of Abraham. God wants to bring out a new kingdom out of Abraham. Now God wants to bring out a great blessing, a blessing that will bless the world. And you are like the same like Abraham because you are a descendant of Abraham by the blood of Jesus, by, the, by, by, by what Jesus has done on the cross. Now God is saying this moment to us in the time like this that we should separate ourselves from anything that is not right, anything that has to do with idolatry, anything that has to do with our family, what our family is doing that is not in line with God, what our family is doing that is not bringing glory to God, a time like this. Now, we know everyone around the world is celebrating. We are celebrating Celebrating. Some countries are not celebrating Easter. Why some are celebrating? And those that are celebrating Easter are the, are, are, are the Christian countries. And those that are celebrating Easter are those that are believers that have known what Christ has done for them. And you can see that all that all that we could see that is happening now started from a journey from Abraham. You know, when, when God speaks to us, give instruction to us, God sees the bigger picture beyond what we can see. When God gives instruction to us, God sees the great plan that he has for us. When God gives instruction to us, God thought begin to move, move mightily as we begin to move with what God is about to do. And we begin to see the will of God manifesting a time like this. What should we do in times like this? What can we do in time like this? Are we just going to fold our hands and begin to watch? Are we just going to sit there without not doing something? Are we, not just, are we just going to sit there without not walking in line with the will of God? And that is not what God wants us to do. God wants us to do what? Not just to sit down. God wants us to do what? To study his word, to know his mind. The scripture says the secret of those are of God are with those that reverence God. That means those that obey God. Now, what is God trying to tell us the time we are in now? The time like this. What is God trying to tell you? Is God saying in his word that he's not faithful? Is God saying in his word that he's not a good father? Is God saying in his word that he doesn't love you? We're going to find out all this as we begin to study the word of God. First and foremost, let's go to Psalm 24 and see how wonderful and awesome our father is. Psalm 24. We're going to read verse 1 and 2, the book of Psalm 24. If you are there, just say praise the Lord. Psalm 24, say praise the Lord. Psalm 24 from verse 1. He said, verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it. The earth is the Lord. God owns the word because he created the word. And if you read Genesis chapter 1, you could see how God created the word verse by verse. How God, in creating everything, he created man in verse 26. You could see that everything belongs to God. He said the earth is of the Lord. And he now make it more, more defined. He said the world and those who dwell in it. So God owns everything. God owns the system. God owns the kings. God owns the queen. 
God owned the prince. God owned the, the, the government. God owns everything. But guess what? The devil is finding all means, which is doing now by his demons, finding all means to make sure that the world will not enjoy the goodness of God. That the goals that are working in line in light of God will not be able to showcase what they need to showcase. But the devil is a liar because Christ has fought the battle for us. The scriptures say when he died, he rose again. Stone could not stop him. He definitely rose again because that was a prophecy that the scripture come into fulfillment and it came to pass in Jesus' name. He said the earth is of the Lord. So the time we are in now, if you know your father owns the earth, if you know your father created the heavens and the earth, if you know your, your father is a covenant-keeping God, then why are we afraid? If you know your father is the creator of the heavens and the earth, then why are you saying it's all over? Well, if you know your father is a God that make promises and those promises come to pass, then why are you worried? Why are you not making your heart joyful? Why are you not enjoying the peace of God? Now, the reason for you not being able to see what God is doing is because you're looking at the challenges. You are looking at what the news is saying. You are looking at what your circumstance is saying. You are not looking at what God promises is saying. If you go to the same, that Genesis chapter 12, you will read that after you, in that same chapter, a word was given to him. A promise was given to him. A word of covenant was given to him. The Lord told Abraham and said, This land you are standing now, I will give it to your descendant. But after saying all those things, there are still giants, there are still people there. And what I mean by giants, there are still people who live in that land that is given to his descendant. Mind you, this, 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 the descendant is talking about, they have not come to life yet. But in all that, God still make a promise of word of covenant to Abraham. But something you need to understand is that there is a famine in the land. He has to move. He has to leave the place. He has to go and find a place whereby he can be able to feed or take care of his family. He has to move because he cannot stay in a place where it's not productive, where it's not fruitful. But the declaration of the word of fruitfulness has been declared to him. Can't you see this? The Bible scripture makes us understand that our, if, if you go for that, but that's the way I'm going now, you can see how God showed forth favor upon Abraham. And that favor came to him is based on the fact that from verse two, from verse one of the same chapter, Abraham obeyed God. And God can see his level of his heart. God can see definitely that this is Abraham. I've just spoken to him. He's just knowing me now. There is a need for me as a person. Uh, there's a need for me as his father, as a faithful God, to, to provide for him, provide for him in the midst of all that is happening to him. Remember what I read in Psalm 24. The earth is of the Lord, and all that is in it belongs to him. So, the time we are in now, which is a time like this, there is a need for us to look up to Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. There is a need for us to look up to God as our source as our provider. And there's a need for us to begin to see that what is God trying to do here? But I also believe that in everything that is happening around you, there is always an opportunity. Praise the Lord. There is always an opportunity, an opportunity for God to showcase what he has put in you, an opportunity for God to turn things around to glorify his name. But there is a process involved. There is God timing involved. Not your time, but God timing involved. And when you begin to see a time like this, you just need to do what? Look up to God himself. Praise the Lord. He give you praise. And do you know one thing? The guarantee word I want you to see here. Let's go to Proverbs Proverb 21 verse 1 says. He said, the king's heart is like a channel of water in the end of the Lord. And it turns it whichever way he wishes. So, which means that in everything that you need, there is always a king there that will need to make that thing come to pass. And those kings, and those kings are humans. In the area of human beings that you go to them, in the area of you're looking for a job, now, there's always a king that you go and meet. A king in the area, somebody that has the authority to give you what you want. But the Bible is saying, or the scripture is saying that, that the mind of kings are in his hands. So, he's saying that 
the heart of God in the uh, heart of kings are in his hand. He, 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 he said his heart is like channels of water in his hand of the Lord. So whatever you need, whatever that need you need in a journey, that not what you need, what God, what you need, not what you want. Those things that you need, God will provide them for you if you trust him. God will provide them for you if it's in line with the will of God. God will provide them for you if, it, if it's connecting to the word of God. You can see that when Abraham went to, to Egypt, on getting to Egypt, he had to tell his wife, telling his wife that, you know, as I'm going out, I want you to tell them that you are my sister. That was what he told his wife. Truth speaking, his wife is his sister because his wife was um, in a way related to him. If you find out that his wife was a um, was one of the one of the uh, one of the wife the father the uh, one of the um, wife the father married uh, the wife was the daughter of them. So what I'm saying is that is that they are related. They are brothers and sisters. But that was what Abraham told Sarah. But if you read the scripture there, you will see how God moved ahead of Abraham. How God moved ahead of Abraham to, let's go there, to, I don't want to speak more without not reading the scripture. Let's go to that same Genesis chapter, chapter 12, I think it's chapter 12 or 13. Let me quickly read. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Chapter 12. Let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. Thank you, Father. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Look at what he said in verse 11. He said, And when he was about to enter Egypt, and he said to Sarah, his wife, Listen, I know that you are a beautiful woman. So when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me. Now, that is a wife uh, we, we're reading here. Now, let's put it in the context of not just a wife, what you have that the enemy want to take from you, what you have that the enemy want to ridicule, what you have that the enemy want to sit upon. But for the fact that you've obeyed God at the beginning, for the fact that you, you, you've obeyed God, you trust God, God's love will not fade or fade away from you. God's love will not be far from you. God will just show his love on you by giving you the divine favor that you deserve. I just pray this moment in the name of Jesus Christ that the love of God during this season, that the love of God will, will begin to restore what needs to be restored to you in the name of Jesus Christ. When you read the same scripture, you discover that Abraham was blessed in the midst of all this. He was still blessed because God made it that to happen. Praise the Lord. If you read, let me, let's go through that. So I will read again and you see let me, let me start from verse 15. And Pharaoh, prince, official, also saw her and praised her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken for the purpose of marriage into Pharaoh's house. Verse 16. Therefore, Pharaoh treated Abraham well for her sake, for the sake of the wife. Now, let me say, and, and he, he acquired sheep, oats in male, and female donkeys, and male and female servants, and camel. But the Lord punished Pharaoh. Look at this. The Lord punished Pharaoh because why? Because not only Pharaoh punished, he punished the asshole of Pharaoh because of one man, Abraham. Because of the obedience he did from the beginning. Because of the love God has for him. So I want to understand something this moment, that God love that he has towards you, that love will deliver you this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe in him. If you believe in what was done on the cross of Calvary, if you believe in the resurrection that happened in that tomb, that that spirit that rose Christ from there still dwells in you, if you are a believer, it will deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. In time like this, the world, as I said before, the, the world is going through a lot. And I want to understand something here. The time we are, that we are in right now, your faith will be tested. And the reason why God allowed things like this to happen is for our faith to be tested. It is it's, it's, it's for, it's for the faith that you have in God to be tested. God allows it so that you begin to know God more as that faith is tested in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And in a time like that we are in like this, the prophecy of God become life. You begin to see the prophecy of God, what he has said concerning you, what he has said concerning this time, this the time, this end time, you begin to see those things, man, you begin to see them around you, the prophecy of God as the revelation of the word of God, you begin to see them come to life. Praise the Lord. Now, how do you not know that those revelation or prophecy is coming to life and the only way for you to know that is to refer to what you've read before what you studied before and if you've not studied that before how will we be able to know that the prophecy is coming to life and that means we need to do what to study god's word and have more more time more intimacy with god the time we are in now in the name of jesus christ now, I want to see this way right now. The time that we are in right now, the word of God becomes life to us. What I mean by life is that what you've read, you begin to see. You begin to see healing if you believe in it. You begin to see divine restoration if you believe in it. Remember, Jesus told the disciple that he will die and rose again. Or that he will rise again. He told them. Some did not believe, some were doubting him. But that word he said came to life. Jesus actually rose again. And he, he actually revealed himself to them, to his disciple. And Jesus actually promised his disciple and promised us as well that he will be with us to the end of time. So if God says he's going to be with you to the end of time, you have to trust him and he's with you. He's in you, he's with you in the name of Jesus Christ. The time like this is a time of praying and a time of doing more, more, more of God things. It's a time of praying and doing more of God work. It's a time of doing more of God's purpose. Because why? Jesus is coming very soon. It's a time like this whereby you don't just fold your hands. All you need to do is to do what? To do the will of the Father you know, Jesus said one word, the wonderful thing I love so much about him. He said, he said the joy of him is for him to do the will of the Father. So what is your joy? What brings you joy? What is the joy in your heart? Is it to do the will of your heavenly Father or to do your will? I believe what you should be saying in your heart, and I believe what you are having in your heart is to do the will of your Father. Praise the Lord. A time like this, we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. We allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. Jesus said that I will send you the helper. So Jesus know that we, they, they, we will always have, have a need for help in our life. We will always have a situation whereby we need the Holy Spirit to help us. We, we, that Jesus know that in the time that, is, that we are in, our time to come, that we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. I want to tell you something, and I always say this anytime I'm, I'm, I'm preaching in any place. I always say that don't be thinking that things will get better in the world. I repeat my, the word I said. Don't put it in your mind that things will get better in the world because the scriptures are made us to understand that things will become worse when we are come getting closer to the end of time. You know, say things will get worse when we, are, when we are getting to the end of time. So if you're praying, if you're praying that, oh Lord, let there be peace in the world. Yes, it will come, but not this time that the peace will, uh, will manifest around the world. It shows that God is, Jesus is coming very soon. So our mind as believers should be more centered on the coming of Christ. Our mind as believers should be more centered that when death comes right now, am I going to make heaven? Our, our mind should be centered on, on, on souls that are out there that don't know Christ. There are a lot of people who don't know Christ. There are a lot of people who, who are the hearing of Christ. They just see Christ, Christ as a commercial, yeah, a Christ. As, as just a figure, but they don't know him personally. They need Jesus want us, God want us to do what, to go out there and preach the word of God. And preaching the word of God in this time, we need to preach it out by sp speaking the word of God to the world. At the same time, let our life that will really speak his word to them. You know, let them begin to see the evidence of the Holy Spirit in us. And let us begin to see the joy of the Holy Spirit in us. Let us begin to see the love of the Holy Spirit in us. Let us begin to see that in us so that that would draw them to God. Praise the Lord. The time like this is a time of giving 
giving as well, giving your substance. There are a lot of people who are there who does not have much. A time like this is a time we give to them. We give what we can give. We give in love of God. We give in a direction of God. Sometimes, sometimes we in giving, we need to be led to give sometimes. And sometimes can just give. So there is a leading, there is a, there's, there's, there, 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 there's an importance of us allowing God to guide to give. Praise the Lord. A time like this, we should be more vigilant. What I mean by vigilant is, vigilant is your eyes should be very open. You, you, you should be praying and, and allowing your eyes to be open, not to be closed. A time like this is, is, is for you to always look around your surrounding. You have to be wise as serpent and armless, armless like a dove. A time like this, we should put our mind that Jesus is coming very soon, very, very soon. Very, very soon in the aspect that the time is not given. Jesus is not tell us, I'm coming in May. He didn't tell us, I'm coming four years from now. I am coming 10 years from now. But he showed, told us those signs that we, that, that we begin to see around us that will tell us, oh, Jesus is coming very soon. The end is near. Praise the Lord. The time that we are in. I want to encourage you, encourage you this moment that the promises and the covenant of God towards us and for us are powerful and, are, and is real. And this promises and covenant of God is meant for us to rely on, depend on in this time and season. God promises towards men of all Jacob. He fulfilled his, his word in their life. Let's go to Isaiah 53 verse 1 to 3. Isaiah, 50, uh, Isaiah 43 verse 1 to 3. Sorry about that. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. I want you to see. He said, but now, I'm reading the ampli Amplified Version. He said, but now, this is what the Lord your creator says, O Jacob. Now, he's speaking to Jacob. Is speaking to Israel, is speaking to you as well. And he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. God is saying, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you by the blood of the, of the Lamb. I have redeemed you by the blood of Jesus. Redeem, redeem means I have bought you, I have shown the love to you. From captivity. So wherever, whatever thing you're going through, whatever thing that I've owed you not to move, whatever the thing that I've owed you not to enjoy, the enjoyment and the peace of God, God is saying this moment that he has redeemed you. You should just look up to Jesus. Look up to the promises that God has said concerning you and begin to walk in it. He said, I have, I have called you by my name. Whoa, bless you, Lord. He said he has called you by his name. So begin to mention his name. His name is Jehovah Jehovah, Jah Jehovah, the creator has called you by his name. He has called you. He has called you this moment. He has called you as God of us. He has called you. So if God is the God of us, why should you be afraid? You shouldn't be afraid of anything. He has called you. He has made you ease. He has called you a royal priesthood. He has made you to understand that you are part of the kingdom. He has made you to understand that you should not. Be worried of what is happening around you. But yet, let your mind be conformed to his kingdom. Let your mind be connected to the promises of his kingdom. Let your mind be awaiting and, 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 and be zealous, zealous to see Jesus coming. You know, it's like the virgin waiting, expecting her husband to come. A virgin that is not defiled. God does not want us to be defiled in this time we are in. Because the world will want to sell what they want to sell to you. What you're hearing want to sell, the devil want to sell what, he normally, what is good at in selling to you. To take what belongs to you. To take the crown upon your head. To take whatever that expectance that you're having towards God from you. 
and replace it with something else that will not profit you, that will lead you to hell. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be lead, you will not, you will not go to hell, but you will make heaven in Jesus' name. He said, when you pass through the waters, look at assurance. Remember from the beginning, he said, I have called you by my name. Remember from the beginning, he has made him to understand that I am your father, I am your creator. I have, I have placed a seal of my name upon you. It's just like you see uh, 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 where, we, where I am right now. I'm, uh, I'm in the United Kingdom. When you see a, 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 a police officer in this country, you see a badge of that badge of the United Kingdom on them. You will see that badge of the kingdom in them. That is what I'm trying to tell you that there is, there is a badge of the kingdom in you. There's a seal upon you. There is, there, 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 is, there is a present in you. God is saying this moment that you should look at that present, look at that seal, look at the promises, look at what makes you a child of God, and look at the price that was paid for your sake, for the love of God towards you. God is saying if you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. Now, if you go to the scriptures, I want us to go to, to, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to go, go to a scripture here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, give you praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I want to see something here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to see something here. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Now, if you look at Matthew chapter 8, you will see that they were in the boat. The disciples were in the boat. And for, from verse 23 to 27, and Jesus was in that boat. And there was a great storm. And in the midst of that storm, Jesus was asleep. And the scripture makes you understand that there were water filling the whole place in the boat. Jesus was asleep. And they woke Jesus up. And Jesus said, let there be peace. And the storm honored that word that Jesus uttered, and peace was still. Now that is God saying that, that is the scripture that we just read now coming to life there. That in the midst of the storm, that God will speak in that storm, and peace will be still. The scripture says that the peace that I give to you is not as the word we give to you. Now, the peace that God's kingdom will give to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, it will overshadow and put to destruction every chaos or storm that is speaking in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The peace that God will give to you is the peace of the mindset that you have a place in his kingdom. The peace that God will give to you is, is that peace that you begin to have in you and say, I am a child of God. I am a child of Zion. The peace that God says he's going to give to you is the peace that even in your journey of life, God will guide you to finish well in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And that is what God He's saying, God is saying, even in the rivers, our waters are going to be with you. Let's go back to the same Isaiah. Isaiah let's go, to, uh, um, go back to the same Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. Let's go back there again. He said here, he said, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire... You will not be scorched. Whoa, praise the Lord. And that will tell you more when you go to the book of Daniel. Praise the Lord. Let's try and go to the book of Daniel. I think Daniel chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Daniel chapter 3, verse, verse 22 to 25. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel, the book of Daniel. If you're there, say praise the Lord. It's in Old Testament. The book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Daniel chapter 3. Let, 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 let me read from verse 1. Now, the king, the king made a gold plated image. I'm just paraphrasing. Whose eyes, including the, uh, the pedestal, and was 60 cubits, cubit, 90 feet, and its wide cubit, and 9 feet. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Verse 2 says, Then the king sent words to the assemblies, the satraps, and the prefects, and the governors, and the counselors, the treasurers, and the judge, and the magistrates, and the lawyers, and all the chief officials of the providence to come and dedicate the image that the king, Nebuchadnezzar, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, had set up. Then the satrap, the, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the, the treasurers, the judge, the magistrates, the lawyers, and all the chief officials of the providence gathered together for the dedication of the image that the king made and had set up. Praise the Lord. They stood before it. Then I read loudly, proclaiming, you are commanding all people nation. You are commanded all people nation. Speakers of every language. Speakers of every language. It says that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn. Pipe, lyres, and trigons, four strings herbs. Now, and, 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 and it said here, Praise God. And uh, Delsoma and bagpipes and all kind of music. You are to fall down and worship the golden image that the king has made. Praise the Lord. You see here, you can see, I, I choose, I just felt I should read verse 1 and, and, and 2 first before we go to what happened next. You can see that all the people that were mentioned here, they are the people we know in the society. Great people that people respect in society. They have to bat for the image that the king has made. The image the king has made is not the image of God. It is the image of himself. Parading himself that is more important. Just as the devil is doing around the world right now. Just as the system is doing around the world right now. Just as what the custom of the world is doing right now. Everyone is dancing to the sound that they want them to. To dance with. There's a drum beating and they want everyone to dance to it with all lies and deception of the devil. But these three men of God, these three prophets, they never bow down to this image. And God has spared us that the time we are in now, just like this time, we are just the time they were that time is this happening right now, just like that time is manifesting right now where the enemy wants us to bow down to his lies, where the enemy wants us to bow down to the deceptions, where the enemy is making us or wants us to bow down to, the, to, to what the sound of the world is doing. You can hear that, the war in Ukraine and Russia. And, and, and you can see that everything is getting very expensive. You can see that, you can, if, if you, if, if you, you can see that everything that you see around us they are not normal as God has made them to be. They become abnormal. There, there's, a, there's a right for, 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 for a man to marry a man. There's a, there's a right for a woman to marry a woman. All these are sound that they want you to bow down to. But God is saying here that we should see here. We should see what the prophets did here. We should see what Shadrach, um, uh, Midrach, and Abednego did here. They did not bow down to that image. They did not bow down to what the world is saying. They did not bow down to what is not of God. They did not give themselves to it. In short, they didn't even say that we are not going to bow down. Even if you put off in that fire. Let's go now to verse, um, praise God. Let's go to verse, let's go to the verse we want to read now. I want to go to verse 13. Now the king, look at what the king did. He was so furious. He raged and gave a command to bring Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. And these men were brought before the king. And you can see, you see, they were brought before the king. They were brought before the one who has the authority at that time. They, you, you, you might not be 
be brought before the king, a situation that made you to, to, to be oppressed, a situation that made you to be threatened, a situation that made you to, 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 to ridicule your personality as a child of God. And you can see here, that's why they were brought before the king. Look at what they say to the king. This is, this is my blowing, praise the Lord. You know, you see that God is trying to minister to us. Look at what he's saying here. Thank you, Father. God, you are awesome. Thank you, Jesus. I'm in verse, um, verse I think verse 14 now. He said, he said uh, Meshach and Abednego, that you do not serve my God or worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, verse 15 says, Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, when you hear the sound of the pipe, when you hear the sound of the instrument, I'm just paraphrasing, all kind of music, to fall down and worship this image, which I have, I have made very good. But if you do not worship, you shall be thrown at once into the midst of the finals of a blazing fire. A lot of us, listening to us now, we refuse to compromise. We refuse to dance in the tune of those in our workplace. We refuse to yield to the world that we are hearing around us in the area of, of where we are coming from. I'm talking about in the area of faith. A lot of us are not walking, are not ready to walk in the opposite way where God has not wanted us to walk to. And in doing that, you become... You become enemy to some people, and you become you become uh, 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 someone that a tag has been placed upon, a tag of negativity has been placed upon by what they think, by what they say. But in the eyes of God, God is seeing you as a righteous son. God is seeing you as a righteous daughter. God is seeing you as a faithful servant because you are not buying that you are not compromising to the to the things and the lies of the devil. And look at what they say that really, really amaze me. Verse 6 says, Shadrach and, and Meshach and Abednego answered, say, answered the king, We do not need to answer you on this point. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to rescue us from the finals of, of, of the blazing fire. And he will rescue us from your, your hand, O king. Verse 18, I said, But even if it does not, let it be known to you. O king, that we are not going to serve your God or worship the good image that you have set up. The time we are here now is the time to say or to speak or to have the art of these lovely and honorable men of God who are not your father. These are vessels of honor. These are vessels of honor that God himself has molded. These are vessels of honor that God himself has molded with abundant grace. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we will never, never give on to the trick and the lie of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you read, you will see that the scripture makers understand that God in his word came to pass. That truly, the same Isaiah 43 verse 1 to 3 became life here in the scripture here. That God... And the, the king saw that there was another, praise the Lord, let me just read it. They were put in the fire, the blazing fire. Look at what he said. He said, then, the, the, verse 21 said, then these three men were tied up in their trousers, their coat and their turbans and their other clothes, and were thrown into the midst of the finals of the blazing fire. Verse 22 said, because the king command was urgent, the finals was extremely hot. Now, because of what you're going through, because of what you believe in, it might look tougher and tougher. It might look you are praying, the prayer is not answer, an answering. It might look at your enemy is taking over you, the, your enemy is, 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 is dominating you. It might look as if you've been rejected. But guess what? The Bible says that 
The flame of the fire killed the men who carried up Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. So the same way with the flame of fire, whatever the enemy have done has set against you. Instead of it haunting you, it will destroy your enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. This is where the scripture comes alive. It says, no weapon formed against us, the children of God, shall prosper. That weapon did not prosper. That weapon of fire did not prosper. It did not prosper to take dominion over them. It said, that fire became a favor to them. Let me begin to read now. It now said, but verse 23, it now said, but these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the midst of the fires, of the blazing fire, still tied up, 24 says, the king looked, praise the Lord, and was astonished, astounded, and he jumped up and said to his counselor, did we not throw three men who were tied up into the midst of the fire? They replied, King, certain, O king, he answered, Look, I see four men. Praise the Lord. I see four men. I want to understand something. This is Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah coming to life for three verse, to, to verse one. I mean, from verse 43, to, uh, from chapter 43, from um, Isaiah 43, from verse 1 to 3, coming to life. You can see that they saw the fourth man. They saw the presence of God. You know, look at what the Christian said. Look, I see four men untied. That is the same way God will untie you today in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray that the favor of God, as you've not given in to the lie of the devil, as you've not given in to what the devil is placing upon you, I pray by the grace and by the season that we are in, the season when Christ died and rose again, I declare whatever that is dead in your life, begin to rise now to the light and to the blessing of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, look, say, look, look, see. They are not hot. May you not be hot in Jesus' name. See, the appearance of the thoughts is like the son of the God. That is what he could interpret. That is what he could, that, that is what he could say. But that was God himself. That was God showing forth that he's with them. That was God showing forth that he loved them. That was God being delight in what they said in their heart. Are we like that? That God would just say, oh, look at my servant. Look at what he just said. That means my servant loved me so much that if he, he would say, even if I don't come and rescue him, he will still not bow to another God. I just put yourself in this, in this kind of scenario, scenario. Just put yourself and see that you have a son. And they're trying to take your son. They are trying to make your son to leave your home and go to another home and start calling somebody else his father, his mother. How will you feel if you're a mother, you give birth to a child, and that child is not going to be taken away? They are forcing your child to be against you. And you now see your child and say, no, no matter what you do to me, my mother is still my mother. No matter what you do to me, my father is still my father. No matter what you are trying to do for, to me, my master is still my master. How will you feel if you... As an earthly father, an earthly mother could feel joyous, could feel happy to see that your son loves you. What do you think you would do? You don't even need to think of it. Immediately, you feel so happy that your son is standing by you. Your son appreciates what you've done. For him, the same way how God feels towards us, towards us, God feel happy when we continue to acknowledge Him as God. We will begin to trust on Him that is our source. We will begin to say, no matter what is happening around the world, we will not give in to what the devil is saying. We believe that God will definitely show up. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to see this way here. There is a lot that God will do for us. And there's a lot that God expects us to do as well. If you read Genesis chapter 12, if you read the part, you will see that God was giving a word of promise as a covenant to this man. This man left and obeyed and walked with God. This man left and obeyed and believed that God will rescue him. I want you to see this way right now that if you're walking in a life that is not right, pleasing to God, God will not be happy with you. 
The Bible says in Proverbs chapter two, Proverbs four twenty three says, "Watch over your heart with all diligence, for for from it flows the spring of life." Watch over your heart. Now, one of the things that the devil do is to make sure that he makes himself known by giving something that will make him your heart to be won by him. And I believe that he will come to you, parading himself as devil or demon. He will bring things to you to entice you. He will bring counsel to you to entice you. He will bring things to you that he will put fear in you. But you need to guide your heart. How will you guide your heart if you don't have the word of God to guide your heart? How will you guide your heart if you don't accept the God that will make that heart beautiful? How will you guide your heart if you don't accept the instruction and the word from the Holy Spirit? He said, we should guide our heart. And the enemy wants us to put, to put lies and deceitful things in us. The enemy wants us to, to remove the uniform of the kingdom. The enemy wants us to remove the garment of the kingdom and put up put on the garment that he wants us to put on, which is a garment of lies. I want to read something to you. The same, the same Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 24 says, say, put away from you a deceitful, lying, misleading mouth and put devious lip far from you. Verse 25 now says, let your eyes look directly ahead towards the path of moral courage. That means you have to look at, look, this time we are in, you need to look at that moral courage. That moral courage that will encourage you, that will encourage others as well. Praise the Lord. And let, let your gaze, praise the Lord, be fixed straight in front of you. Towards the path of integrity. The time we are in now is a time of knowing that you are not of this world. You represent Christ. You represent the kingdom. You represent God. Integrity matters. He said, Pastor, he said, say, consider well and watch carefully. Carefully. Watch carefully. The, watch carefully. Your feet. And all your ways will be steadfast and sure. So you should watch carefully. I want to, I, I want to read, I, I want you to ask to go to Proverbs 20, Proverbs 426. Proverbs 426. I want to read it from the Amplified Version. Proverbs 426. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 426. I want us to look at it. Proverbs 426. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 4, 26. Proverbs 4, 26. 4, 26. I want to read now. He said, Consider well and watch carefully the path of your feet. He said, Consider well and watch carefully the path of your feet. In this journey that you're going to be walking, you should watch your moves. You should watch where you're going to. You should watch where you're coming from. You should be very careful how you move. And I say, careful in the path of your feet. Be careful on the journey you are in. Be careful in every decision and choice you make. Be careful. He said, and all your ways will be steadfast and sure. I want to see it here. What is the meaning of to be steadfast? I want us to read it. He said, re, re Resolutely or judicially fame and unwavering or fame fixed in place, not subject to change. You see, you have to be fame, you have to be, you have to be strong, you have to be not be someone that can easily be moved easily like that. Let them be able to say, when you come to that man to tell him this, he won't do it. When you, when you use words that are swearing words to this man, he won't accept it. Anything you say that is not right, this man will not accept it. Let them begin to see that in you. Mm. I can see that this man is a Christian. You don't need to tell people, I am a Christian. Let them begin to see the Christ-like in you. Praise the Lord. Now, the time we are in right now, God will provide for you. I, will, I repeat again. The time we are in, God will provide for you. I want to focus something here. That bill that you're looking that is impossible to be paid, God will pay them 
for you. God will pay them for you. But before God will do that, you must do what? You must be diligent in what you do. You must be do what you must, you, you must, you must acknowledge that what you're doing or the job you're doing is to solve problems. I want to read something for us here. I want to see here in, in Matthew 17, 27, you will see that Jesus gave instruction. Look at what he read. Let me read verse, uh, verse 27. He said, However, so that we do not offend them, go to the sea and throw in a hook and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open, open when, when, when you open it, mouth, you will find a shekel, shekel, take it and give it to the them to pay for the temple, for the temple task for you and me. You can see that Jesus. When there was a need for a tax to be paid, when there was a need for certain money to be paid, what did Jesus do? He gave him instruction. He told Peter to go fishing. He didn't just say money would just appear like that. He has to do something. He has to go and do something connected to the works of his hand. What I'm trying to say is that God will bless you in this season in regard to the works of your hands. And I pray this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, just open your hand and say, in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, touch my hands. Touch my hands. Touch everything connected to what I am doing. Touch my hands. Say, Lord, touch my hands. You did it. You provided for the disciple. You paid for the tax of the disciple and for yourself. And you gave Peter instruction. Say, Father, bless my hand. And if we read the scripture, as we could see, when Peter toiled all night, they couldn't catch any fish. But when Jesus came to him, before you remember in that same scripture, when Peter toiled all night without no fish, he was washing his nets. But Jesus made use of his boat. You have to allow God to come into your boat of life. You have to allow God to come to your boat of ministry. You have to allow God to come to your boat that, that of journey. Journey of your family. You must allow God to come into your boat. That was what happened in Genesis. God gave instruction, separated him, separated Abraham from his family because he's trying to build a nation. This moment, God wants to build to use you to bring newness to your family. God wants to bring newness to your, fam your extended family. God wants to bring newness to your nation that you are in. That men will, be, will come to you, begin to see the goodness of God in your life. But what you need to do, first, the integrity part, it needs to be seen in you by the Holy Spirit that is going to prompt you to see, for them to see that integrity. But you have a part to pay in obedience. But and secondly, whatever you are doing, do it as if. If you are working in that company, do it, just do it as God is the one that owns that company. If you are working under, under anyone, under, under anyone in, 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 in a company, in, 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 in wherever you are working, just walk there as if your father owns that company. Do it with, with a sincere heart, and God will reward you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. I'm going to be riding off very soon, and we, I will proceed from where I stop next uh, Tuesday, by the grace of God. I want to, I, I want to read the scripture for us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Do not be anxious or worried about anything. Put but, it says, do not be anxious. Finish up chapter 4, verse 6 says, do not be anxious or worried about, about, about anything. But in everything, in every circumstance, it says here, it says, and situation, in every circumstance or situation, he said, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, even as you are praying, just be giving thanks to God, knowing that your Father, your Heavenly Father, has answered your prayer. So there is need for you to pray. There is need for you to do thanksgiving. Begin to give. Now sometimes, sometimes when you feel that you've finished praying and you pray and that thing has not come into existence, just begin to give thanks to God. But most cases, what you prayed for has already been answered. But it has to come in God's time. And before it comes in God's time, come with the art of expectation that you receive it and begin to give praise to God and give thanks to Him. And, to, and continue to make your specific request known to God. That means your, your request must be specific. Your request must be specific. You know, most of us, we ask for things actually that we don't really need. 
we, we ask for things that because we just want those things to be given to us so that people can know that we've arrived. But that's not the way things of God work. Yes, the Bible says we should ask for anything. He said so. But when you are asking outside the will of God, God is not going to answer you. God gives you things in line with the will that he has towards you. God gives you things. You know those things that he will give to you, they will be good for you. God will not give you things that will cause destruction to you. He said the blessing of God added no sorrow, which means when God gives you a blessing, there is multiplication for other people to, to enjoy from, people to be blessed from. So I believe strongly that if we continue, continue, continually, continually, strongly, strongly ask, asking God to lead us, asking in line with the will of God, and how will you do that is when you pray through the help of the Holy Spirit. He searches your heart. He knows what genuinely you need. In searching of your heart, it means that he's, he's searching those things that genuinely that you need in line with the will of God. Praise the Lord. And I want to read another scripture to us. You know, in this time that we are in, you know, we should be very careful. We have to do a balancing. You know, when it comes about money, I know we need money to run our family, we need money to run the ministry, we need money to do a lot of things. You know, even the Bible talks about money answering all things, but it doesn't mean that money can answer everything. There are certain things money can handle, those are the, those are, those are the physical things, but spiritual things, money cannot be able to answer them. But here, when you have love of money, when you, when you, are, you are so conscious about making money, you know, it's all about, it's good to make money, but don't, don't let money become an idol in the time we are in now. I know a lot of us that, 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 that we, are, we are working. Sometimes our work, our work, our work have overshadowed or have, 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 have made us not to render the service we should have rendered concerning the calling God has given to us. Our work have made us not be able to be to serve others as God has made us. We should have served them. In the area of ministry, a lot of us we we are actually um, the Yoruba man. We say mo new wagwala means that I will not be looking at somebody else's uh, uh, way of success, somebody else's uh, uh, pattern of life to influence me in my own way. What is what I'm trying to say is that is that I am unique. I have things I need to achieve. Whatever you're doing, you have to put it this way: God first. Secondly, your family. Then thirdly, God first, your family, and every other thing surrounding it. So if you say God first, it means God purpose in your life. Everything you're doing, is it affecting God purpose in your life? Take, for example, you are a man of God, a pastor. Now you are doing, you are doing two jobs. You spend more time on the job than the church that has been given to you. You are after having... Six houses, ten houses. I'm not against it. But whatever you are having or you are trying to achieve is not is 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 overshadowing the calling of God upon your life. Or whatever you are doing is is taking your family from God. That means money is that means that thing becomes an idol. A lot of us, if we look at whatever we are doing, that will make us to be far from our family, wherever we are trying, we are doing, don't be far from our family, make our family not to be close to God, wherever we are doing, that is make us not to do the will of God. If you look at it, it's tied to money. It's linked to money. If you look at the scripture, the scripture about the sower, he said they gladly receive the word because of the cares of this world. Why? Wow, the cares of this world were the tones that were on them. The cares of this world is, is the love of money. The cares of this world is no more appreciating the word of God. No more appreciating the prophetic work concerning your life. No more appreciating the will of God over your life. But you are looking at the custom of the word. You are looking at the word expectation than God expectation. Praise the Lord. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says, says, For the love of money, that is the greedy desire for it, and the willingness to gain it in, on, on, on ethically, is a root of all sort of evil. 
and some by looking for it have wondered. Listen, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said look, I'll read again. He said, some by looking for it, some by going after it, paraphrasing, some by loving it with all their hearts, trying to acquire it, have wandered away from the faith and do what? Are pressed away from the faith. And I pierce themselves through with many sorrows, which means if you are too in love with money, you might be successful. People might call you a successful person, but truly, the way God looks at you, there is sorrow on you. Because why? God is looking at your ending point, how you're loving that money more than Him. The Bible says, says sorrow, sorrow will be upon that person. Now, now look at verse 11, that says, but as for you, O man of God, he's speaking to the men of God, believers, I want to understand something. If you give your life to Jesus Christ today and you genuinely love him with all your heart and you are serving God, you are a man of God. Praise the Lord. Say, but as for you, O man of God, free from these things. So if you're a man of God, you love money too much, more than God. The Bible says, he's saying that you should flee from it. He said, free, free from it. From these things, him at and pursue righteousness, true godliness, moral conformity to the character of God, and godliness, the fear of God, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. That's what he's saying. So, I'll be stopping in the next five minutes. I want to see something here that's very important here. The time we are in. The time... We are in. The time we are in. What are you going to do with this time that you are in? The time we are in. What are you doing with this time that you are in? The time we are in. The coming of Jesus Christ is very close. What are you doing? The question is for you to answer yourself. I can't answer that for you. The time we are in, who are you trusting? The time we are in, what are you professing from your mouth? What are you declaring from your mouth? The time we are in, are you walking in the light of God? The time we are in now, are you allowing the gift of God that God has given to you to solve people's problem? The time we are in now, are you... Strengthening others to be strong. The time we are in now, are you standing in the gap for others? Praying for them. The time we are in now, are you or making sure that it's all about you, not about others as well? The time we are in, are you investing in the kingdom? Are you investing your time? Are you investing your resources in the kingdom? The time we are in now. Can people say, oh, that man of God led me to Christ. I want to go to, I'll end with this. I want to go to Romans chapter 10. The book of Romans chapter 10. Rome. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Let me, let me look for the verse. Romans chapter 10. Come in. Romans chapter 10. Get him. Just one minute. Romans chapter 10. I want to read verse, verse 11 first. It says, For the scripture says, Whoever believes in him, whoever had her to trust in and rely on him, will not be disappointed. Are you trusting on him? I want to read another, another scripture tour for us here. 
Verse 14 says, in the same Romans chapter 10, but how will people call on him whom they have not believed? And how will they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher, a messenger? And how will they preach or let they are commissioned and set forth for the purpose? I want you to see this way. How will they know? How will the world know about Christ if there is no preacher? How will they know about Christ if there is no messenger? How will they know if they are not commissioned? A preacher here is not just a preacher that goes to the streets to preach the word of God. A preacher here is a preacher that preaches the life of Christ as an action to others. As men begin to see the Jesus in you by the fruit of the Holy Spirit, their life will be transformed. And it's going to now say, how beautiful are the feet of those that evangelize. He's saying, not just a physical beauty here, he's saying that your feet of journey will be beautiful because a crown awaits you. When you obey God, when you love God, when you walk in the righteousness of God and the holiness of God, and when you not pass that message of good news that you've heard, and you pass it, pass it to others to receive and to believe, your faith will be beautiful because it's sure that you are walking towards the goal. You are walking towards the crown. You are walking towards making heaven. You are walking towards being with your heavenly father. I want to ask that question again. After all that we are doing now, where we've gone, what will people say about you? And that is what you need to answer yourself. Are you playing church? Or you are walking with God, a spirit in his word? Are you going to church or going to the garden of saints because of what you want from God, not the true love that you have towards him? That is left for you to answer. But I want to tell you, we are watching me right now. If you've not given your life to Jesus, I want you to understand something. Don't let this season pass you by. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. For such a time like this is a time where God, love, is flowing like a river, flowing, moving like a spirit, a powerful spirit, moving, ready to save you in his mercy and his love. Jesus is saying that, come, I'm here. Is it one that can perfect your life for you? Nobody else can do it, but Jesus is the only one that can do it. Jehovah is saying, I love you beyond anyone can ever love you. Jehovah is saying, I know you, and I want to make you that wish I place in my heart that I want to make you. God is saying, you just need to come. You just need to believe in me. God is saying, I've stretched my hand towards you. Come, let me uphold you. Let me make you a vessel of honor. Let me walk on you this moment. Let me turn things around. Let me begin to walk on your heart for you. That our heart that I made from the beginning becomes a heart that is beautiful. And all you need to do is to give your life to him. I said that when I was speaking that Jesus didn't tend to tell us the time is coming. But he showed us signs around, things that we will see. And those things, you can find them in uh, Matthew chapter 24. Because of time, go and study Matthew 20, chapter 24 from verse 1, and you will see all the signs that Jesus spoke about to show that the end is near. When Jesus comes today, will you make heaven? Or will you die this night? You know, when you die, when one die, it doesn't have second chance for repentance. Because death is a breach. You don't have the opportunity to say, God, forgive my sins anymore. But you have the opportunity now. Just repeat after me. The scripture says that if you confess with your heart, genuinely from your heart, that he will forgive you your sins 
and your book will be written, and your name will be written in the book of life. Just say after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe strongly you came to die for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe you're the Son of God. I have come to you now, Lord. Deliver me. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Deliver me from everything that has to do with sin. Take away iniquity out of my life, Lord. I want you to walk on me, Lord. I want you to make me perfect. I want to walk with you, Lord, that my ways will be perfect. Jesus said, walk with me, Abraham, I will make you perfect. That's what God told Abraham. That's what Jehovah told Abraham. Walk with me, and I will make you perfect. And he did make him, make him perfect. He gave him a son. He fulfilled, God gave him a promises. He said, I, I will, I, 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 you are, I, I say, I will bless you and it will be a blessing to others. And he even gave him an assurance that he will bless those that bless him and he will cause those that cause him. I want you and God wants you to come and be part of the kingdom family. Hell is real and heaven is real. For me, I want to make heaven. And all that... I am doing what we are doing right now by the grace of God. I'm not doing it just, I'm not doing it to showcase myself. I'm not doing it to display art around me. I'm not doing it for my name to be known. But I'm doing it because God gave me the grace to do what I'm doing. I want to see something here. I am talking from a barbershop. I always say this. It means that God can speak through any place. Can speak from every place, any place. God can manifest himself in any place. This is a barbershop. But God's still using this place to minister to you. And I pray this moment that God that beautify life will beautify your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you have confessed and just say after me, Jesus, I have received you as my Lord and Savior. I give you my heart and I'm not taking it back. Use it for your glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I just pray for you right now. I pray that the Lord, as you declare those words, will become life and it will transform you and will remove everything that has to do with death out of your life in Jesus' name. And I pray for you, man and woman watching me right now. I pray that everything in your life that is spiritually death, I pray that the same spirit that rose Christ from death begin to rise you up from those pits right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that mercy will begin to speak for you from this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that everything that you need genuinely, according to the will of God, that the Lord will appoint upon you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you're watching me right now, you want me to pray and agree with you. I want you to place your hand in your chest. Place your hand in your chest. Begin to declare. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord God begin to take control over me. Say the Spirit of the Lord God begin to take control over my family. Say the Spirit of the Lord God begin to take control over my environment now, in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Spirit of God begin to take control over the works of my hands. So Lord, I place my life before you. Fill me afresh with more of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. So Lord, fill me afresh with more of you. Say so Jehovah, fill me afresh with more of you. Fill me afresh with more of your divine presence. Fill me afresh this moment, Lord God, with more of your grace, in the name of Jesus Christ. And begin to pray, say, Lord, Heavenly Father, open my eyes. Let me begin to see those treasures around me that you place as a blessing for me and my family and for the ministry. I want to pray this prayer. I say, Lord, open my eyes. Let me begin to see those treasures around me. Say, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see those treasures around me in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, begin to pray. Say, Lord, open my eyes to begin to see the power in your word in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Now let's begin to thank God for what God has done today. 
I, I let's begin with giving praise for his worthy to be praised. Father, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done today. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for your love. Daddy, I just give you praise and I worship you. Be the highly exalted for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you, brother and sister, we are looking for volunteers. Those that want to come and join us in worship. We, we do what we call praise and worship here in, 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 in this place. And we are in Raynham. Raynham, we are in number, number 127 Wellington Road. Is in Raynham, Excess. It's R-O-M, R-O-M 13, 90 hour. Or you can check on the screen, you will see my email. You can write to me if you want to be a blessing. You know, if you can sing, if you can play instrument, just come and be a blessing. You know, this is a very great family. You know, it's a wonderful family. And I want to come and be part of it in Jesus' name. And secondly, if you're looking for a Bible, if you're looking for a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, please write us. As I always say, call, call the number on screen, if you, if you can see it on screen, and call or send me a text. I will get you a Bible. God bless you and hope to see you next Tuesday. Strong in the Lord and keep burning for God and keep loving God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.